Welcome to another Founded on Christ podcast. Before I get started, if any of you have a testimony of Christ that you would love to share, please do and send it into Founded on Christ podcast at gmail.com. I wanted to go in today um, talking about how this podcast is to help bring you to your own witness of Jesus Christ. Like Curtis says at the end of every podcast, he asks you to seek his face continually. To have a witness could mean many ways in receiving it. I receive my witness through prayer, music, and interesting fact about the music is that when I was preparing for this podcast, I listened to Sabbath day music and a song that just came on was I Know He Lives by David Archuleta. That as one of my main witnesses is through moments like that. Continuing on, also thoughts, scripture, and even images, and I'll add appearances as well. Do you need to have a witness to know Christ is real and ready to help in whatever capacity you're needing? Having a witness or two definitely settles doubts that could arise when the adversary doesn't want you to have it and is the cause of confusion. I've gone through and made a list of some witnesses and their memories of Christ. I'm not going to read all of them, and I'm sure there is plenty more out there, even of your own witnesses. If you are looking for another witness of Christ and his love and mercy, then take a look at these testimonies. Now, <clears throat> these are physical slash spiritual, if you will, witnesses of Christ and his appearance and how he made those around him feel while in his presence. Take note of how you feel or how you would feel if that was you in their place. I'll start with Joseph Smith. We all know how that vision goes. If you don't, it's found in the Joseph Smith history in the Pearl of Great Price. Here are a few others. Suzanne Freeman in her book, Led by the Hand of Christ. The Soul's Remembrance by Roy Mills. Visions of Glory, and this is Spencer's experience, but it's written by John Pontius. A Witness of the Heavenly Realm by Anonymous. You'll find this book as a free download on the Pure Revelations blog. Visions of Heaven by Jane Moe and Embraced by the Light by Betty Eady. Feel free to go and find those books and read them. I'll have Curtis stick the references in the description below. I'm now going to read three experiences. Pay attention to how they feel in Christ's presence. The first comes from George Ritchie. I was not sure when the light in the room began to change. Suddenly, I was aware that it was brighter a lot brighter than it had been. I whirled to look at the nightlight on the bedside table. Surely a single 15-watt bulb could not turn out that much light. I stared in astonishment as the brightness increased, coming from nowhere, seeming to shine everywhere at once. All the light bulbs in the ward could not give off that much light. All the bulbs in the world could not. It was impossibly bright. It was like a million welder's lamps all blazing at once. And right in the middle of my amazement came a prosaic thought, probably born of some bio biology lecture back at the university. I'm glad I don't have physical eyes at this moment. This light would destroy the retina in a tenth of a second. No, I corrected myself, not the light. He. He would be too bright to look at. For now, I saw 
that it was not light, but a man who had entered the room, or rather, a man made out of light, though this seemed no more possible possible to my mind than the incredible intensity of the brightness that made up his form. The instant I perceived him, a command formed itself in my mind. Stand up. The words came from inside me, yet they had an authority my mere thoughts had never had. I got to my feet, and as I did, came the the stupendous certainty, you are in the presence of the Son of God. Again, the concept seemed to form itself inside me, but not as thought or speculation. It was a kind of knowing, immediate and complete. I knew other facts about him, too. One, that this was the most totally male being I had ever met. If this was the Son of God, then his name was Jesus. But this was not the Jesus of my Sunday school books. That Jesus was gentle, kind, understanding, and probably a little bit of a weakling. This person was power itself, older than time, and yet more modern than anyone I had ever met. Above all, with the same mysterious inner certainty, I knew that this man loved me far more than power. What emanated from this presence was unconditional love, an astonishing love, a love beyond my wildest imagining. This next experience comes from Sarah Manet, and she says, An extremely bright light seemed to enter and was moving down one of the streets. This moving light was so brilliant that it outshone the light of the city and was a white light unlike our sun or any other light source I am familiar with. It was so much brighter than anything or anyone else around it. It was then I realized that the source of this moving light was a man at its center, walking. The light came from him, from his body and clothing. His clothes seemed to be made of light, and immediately around his person there was a golden glow with beams of golden sparkling light pouring from his body and reaching out a considerable distance. As I looked closer at the sparkling light and the golden beams, It appeared like fragmented gold, dust, that was actually a part of the beams. The man was very beautiful, and in an instant I knew that this was Jesus Christ, making a visit to the city. He didn't appear at all like the pictures we often see of him. He had no beard, and his hair was reddish blonde. But like most things in the spirit world, it wasn't his appearance that was so overpowering. It was the feeling, it was the feelings and information and everything that was transmitted to you as you looked at him. It was glorious beyond description, and I was very far away. As Jesus walked down the streets, people gathered around him in a huge crowd of hundreds and hundreds, yet there was no pushing or shoving as they reverently and courteously came as close to the Savior as they could. Those in positions closest to him touched his clothes or his person, and some embraced him. While watching the people, I knew that they were feeling his great love for them, which was overpowering. I could feel it also. Those who could not get close enough to touch Jesus could feel his love through the golden beams of light emanating from him. I thought to myself, that these beams of light must spread throughout the universe and to us on earth as well, so that all people everywhere could feel his tremendous love if they wanted to. It was as if love was emanating from him out into the universe, permeating time and space, even in his physical absence. This last one I wanted to share is from anonymous on the pure revelations blog this is a post called just the beginning he actually goes into ways of seeking christ's face 
He starts, I once knew a person who had a special experience with the Lord. They heard his voice, saw him standing near them, but they could not see past the light surrounding him. They were so disappointed, they could not see his face. The vision was very powerful, filled with great light and love, and was an anchor to their testimony. They knew it was real, but asked, Why could I not see him? I responded, Did you ask to hold his hand? Often the Lord gives us spiritual witnesses in degrees according to our faith. But what does that mean? How much faith is required? Am I not doing all that is asked? The definition I use for great faith is seeking revelation and acting upon it. We go through a process of ascending one hill at a time until we reach the summit. Are you seeking to know Him and love Him to a greater degree than ever before? What are your motives? Is it to be His servant or to to gratify a curiosity? Are you patient in this journey, trusting in Him? You know, most will give up and needlessly wait until the next life before they come to Him. What are you doing now to prepare to meet Him? The Lord has taught us His gospel, which we refer to as the doctrine of Christ. He has described to us the path that leads to eternal life. But then, as we grow in our faith, we seek to know Him more intimately, and the promise is that we shall find Him. The first time I went beyond the vision and had the full experience with my Lord, it was overwhelming, yet profoundly gentle. As I approached Him, I did not walk up and face Him directly. I came and bowed myself down and held His hands. I touched His feet and then I rose up and embraced him. I looked toward his face and saw the side of it. He was taller than me. He had a soft smile. I then stood before him in all his radiance. It was a gradual progression of intimacy. This has been the process from the beginning. We grow in the relationship, line upon line, until we can know him and ask our questions and receive the needed blessings. This is the destiny of every person who will, who will receive eternal life, and then it feels like it's just the beginning. Now, as I read these witnesses, I want to remind you that these are witnesses for that individual person, and that when you go and seek your witness, that it will be different You have your own relationship with Christ. One of the things that sticks out to me in all of these is that Christ's light brings unyielding love. They are not afraid. They know exactly who he is and that his love and sacrifice are eternal. I, myself have a memory of Christ. He is one of my best friends. And in this memory, he was teasing me about something like an older brother would do. And we were laughing together. No hard feelings, just love and laughter. He knows us and he wants us to seek him. Remember him. I hope you'll be able to receive your own witness of Christ and his unwavering love for you. Seek his face continually and don't be afraid to receive him and embrace his light and glory. Remember him always. He is to have no other gods before him. He is first and always and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.